Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of our book club. Now today's topic is so important. Perhaps I say that every time because I really mean it. Look at this. We're going to talk about thoughts, okay? Uh, it's secret number 30, 38. It says, look who's talking. The author says, I woke up one day feeling different. I was not very well. Getting up was hard. Dressing up was a sacrifice. And the thought coming, and the thought coming to my mind was, ouch, today is going to be one of those days, she says. The hours went by fast until the time came when I had to go to the airport to pick someone up. Suddenly, a wave of thoughts ran over me and a very loud voice said, so she was driving and she was bombarded with all these terrible thoughts. Look, you are going to crash. You are going to die. It's going to be today. I rebuked the thoughts. However, it had no effect, she says. I got in the car and the voice was so loud and powerful in my mind that I started driving quite afraid. I even saw an accident in my mind when I suddenly heard a loud horn behind me. So there was someone behind her. I'd just been overtaken by a car and the driver started swearing at me furiously, making all the hand gestures he could think of. At that moment, I started questioning myself about those thoughts. Why am I listening to them? Where do they come from? Certainly, they are not from God. God would never bring those thoughts to me, she says. I started talking out loud and, and if anyone saw me in the streets, they would think I was crazy. I found you, devil, she said. I know it's you screaming in my ears, telling me all these horrible things. If telling you that, if telling you that you are tied up is not enough, I'll tell you more, she says. If I die, I will be with my Lord. Great. Why would I fear you? Don't even think about it, she says. I accelerated and went back to driving normally. Now my mind was full of lovely thoughts about what heaven would be like. <laughs> Trying to imagine the wonderful things our God has kept for those who love Him. Uh, I started singing and even giggling. Before I realized it, I was already at the airport and those bad thoughts were no longer in my mind. On that day, I understood that a mechanical faith is not enough. You know when you say, oh, it's tied up in Jesus' name. If you don't mean what you say, then you are being, you're making a mechanical prayer. That's what she means. Only a smart faith, the one which questions, the one that dares is, is the path to a happy and free life. It's important, she says, that we question the origin of certain thoughts. It is essential to know where they come from so that we are able to act on them. We cannot accept everything that comes to our mind. Knowing when God talks to us and when the devil does is essential. Where a God's voice is different from the devil's voice, for sure. God's voice is unique. The devil's voice is accusing and, and choking. So basically, what is she saying? What are we talking about here? Look at the experience. She was driving and then she, she got bombarded with all sorts of thoughts. How many times this happens to us? You are there sitting down studying. You are on your way to work or to, to college, uni, whatever. You are sitting down talking to someone and all these terrible thoughts come to your mind. To paralyze you with fear, with doubts, you need to learn how to defend yourself. Like she says, the voice of God is completely the opposite of the voice of the devil. And yes, as Christians, we know there is good and evil. There is such a thing as God. God is real and the devil is also real. Oh, show me the devil because I have never seen him. Look at his deeds and you will know he's there. So the lack of peace you have, the lack of confidence that you have, that is Satan's work. So have you, be de have you been defending yourself or are you just tagging along? Are you just paralyzing or, or allowing yourself to be paralyzed with fear because of those thoughts? 
learn to fight against them. Actually, you learn that at our church uh, pretty much every day when you attend, okay? But if you have any doubts, come and talk to us, okay? Perhaps you need to talk to someone about what's going on in your mind. Maybe you are you are having these anxiety uh, feelings, you know, this anxiety that is coming over you because of a thought that invaded your mind and you don't know how to um, protect yourself against those. We've just given you some tips, but if you need to talk to someone, come and talk to us. We will pray with you. We will give you some guidance according to the Word of God. All right? Now, she carries on saying, To you, single woman, God says, Daughter, trust in me. The devil says, You will be single forever. Can you see the difference? You will never meet anyone. You are old. You, uh, there is no one who wants you. No one wants you. Nobody will ever want you. So can you see the difference? So learn to identify when, you know, because sometimes we get used, we can get used to evil thoughts and think that these, these are normal or harmless, but they are not harmless. They will shape you into someone you do not want to be. And you look at yourself in the mirror and that's where insecurities come. You, you wished you were someone else. Actually, the potential is inside of you. But you changed your behavior because of the thoughts you are having. And you've become a prisoner of those thoughts. Look how powerful thoughts can be. So protect your mind, react. All right, let's have a look at the task of today. It says, well, when thoughts like this attack you, you already know who is talking to you. In these moments, you need to use your faith and intelligence and dare him, unmask him, shut him up. That's right. You are there walking by yourself and these thoughts come to you. Satan, I know it's you, get out of my mind. My mind is not yours. You react. Okay, then she says, if you don't do that, you will believe in these thoughts and they will happen indeed. You need to act, girl. You cannot stop these thoughts from coming, but you can stop them from settling within your heart, she says. You can question, doubt and kill them. You can do it. So just before we leave, I want to, I want to give you one last example just to illustrate what we are saying here. What are thoughts like? Thoughts are like this bird who has very carefully picked a place to build his nest. Hmm? It can't be just anywhere, right? So the devil is like that. He picks the people and the thoughts for those people. Or he notices there is an, an insecurity or an inclination to, to something in that person. She's not confident. She's very afraid. So, oh, I'm going to... You know, so just like a bird picks a place to build his nest, the devil does that with people. So let's say that one, the first thought or two are the first branches that the bird brings in its beak. And if you don't go like this, get out of here, my head is not for you to build a, a nest, then when you realize there's little tiny birds already in the nest, eggs hatching, and it's already too late, or the damage was already caused. Do you understand? I don't know if this is helpful, but I always think um, of this example, so it keeps me focused. And whenever I see a thought coming my way, I'm like, get out of here. My mind is not yours. All right, I switched the channel. So remember to do that, okay? That's all for now. I hope this helped you. Remember to leave your questions or to share with your friends. Perhaps you know someone who is not even, you know, a member of the church. When I say a member, it's not that you have a membership card, okay? Let me just say this. We, when we say a member, is someone who attends the church. Perhaps the person does not attend the church, but you know your friend struggles with that. Share this video with them, all right? I'm pretty sure it will be super useful and it can even change their life. That's all for now. Like I said, join me again next week. Bye-bye.